Tommy Laren, host of Outkicks. Tommy Laren is Fearless Show. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I'm so happy to be here, especially with so much going on in the world. It's nice to have a meeting of the minds and have a good dialogue about everything. So many perspectives, so much controversy, so I'm excited to dig in. Well, let's jump right into it. Well, in America, we've seen various universities allowing students to partake in pro-Palestine protests. And at Harvard, specifically, there's student groups that have even signed a statement blaming Israel for the violence that's happening. What do you make of this? And do you think that these students need to be facing real consequences? So I am a free speech absolutist. I believe that some of the ugliest speech is the speech we need to hear most because we need to hear who it's coming from and we need people to reveal themselves. So I believe in free speech wholeheartedly. However, there is a definitive line between free speech and then hate speech and then hate crimes and then intimidation or threatening or endangerment. So that line to me is a very, very bold line that you cannot cross. And there are many American students on college campus around this country and really around the world that are fearful, Jewish students, Israeli students, that are actually fearing for their lives. They feel intimidated to even go into their classrooms. Something needs to be done to make sure that these students feel safe. This goes well beyond just free speech. It also goes well beyond just being pro-Palestine or free Palestine. A lot of these individuals are actually advocating for um, anti-Semitic policies. They're advocating against not only Israel, but uh, against Jewish people as a whole, saying, Saying atrocious things like gash the Jews or eliminate Israel, eliminate the Jews. That is a whole nother ball game and that cannot be tolerated. That is threatening speech and I don't believe in that protection here in the United States or anywhere. If the Biden administration is so pro-Israel the way that they've claimed to be since this all unfolded, do you think the president needs to do a better job of publicly condemning these people who take part in protests and are buying into this anti-Semitism? Yeah, and it would be nice if they started with some of the Democratic Congresswomen and men who are serving in Congress right now who have to this day still quadrupled down on Israel bombing that hospital in Gaza, which we know is untrue, and have made several anti-Semitic undertone comments uh, coming from the squad, which we call the Hamas caucus now for obvious reasons. So condemning the Democrats within their own leadership would be a great start. But furthermore, you know, this administration has been fairly pro-Israel, and I respect and appreciate that. However, when you're promising to give tens of millions, a hundred million dollars in humanitarian aid to Gaza without giving the American people the assurance that, that money is not going to go into the hands of terrorists or into the hands of Hamas, that to me is very unsettling. They still have been unable to give us good assurance and, and good confidence to feel like our taxpayer dollars are not going to go to fund something like that. So I have my real concerns. If the Biden administration handles that anything like they handle our own southern border, we're in for real troubles. Well, on that note about, about these progressive Democrats who have been pushing against the Biden administration for their stance, their pro-Israel stance, what do you think that says about the state of the Democratic Party if there is this inner party fighting going on? Well, the Democratic Party has had issues with anti-Semitism for several years now. Uh, Congressman Ilhan Omar has made several statements that many have felt were anti-Semitic in nature. So this is not a new thing. It's just now hitting a fever pitch. And to me, I think the most frustrating part of all of this is that a lot of these people hide under the guise of being pro-Palestinian or, or pro-humanity. But to me, there really isn't two sides to this. There's Israel, and then there are the terrorists who attacked Israel and killed thousands of Israelis in an insurgency. So the fact that so many are hiding behind this notion of free Palestine or pro-Palestinian, I think that it is misleading at best. And I think that a lot of these people are either uneducated or willfully uneducated. And that's a real problem that we're facing here as well. Well, Tommy, we saw a bit of outrage this week when we, there's that video surfacing of the imam in Maryland who has claimed that what happened on October 7 was a great victory. Let's take a look at that clip. What, what happened, okay, during the, uh, the 7th of, of, uh, of this month, okay, it, it was a victory, okay, in, 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 a, in a frame of time, that was a great victory. And Tommy, what do you make of that occurring on your doorstep in the United States? 
It's unfortunate, and it's not just here in the United States. In, in the U.K., of course, Australia, around the world, these demonstrations and this speech has been taking place. And I think even more disturbing than that, you have Americans and American college students going around and pulling down posters of those that have been kidnapped and are still being held hostage by Hamas, going and pulling down those posters in broad daylight proudly and visibly showing their disdain for not only Israel but the Jewish people. So, unfortunately, a lot of people are showing their true colors. I would hope, again, Again, that this is just an issue of uh, miseducation, an issue of these people not being knowledgeable of the real situation and just wanting to feel a part of some social justice movement. But either way, the links that this has gone to in the United States and around the world is really telling of the place that we're in. And it, for me, it only reaffirms my support of Israel and what Israel has to do to make their country safe and keep their people safe, protected and secure. Tommy, looking ahead to 2024, we saw Gavin Newsom was in China last week, kind of randomly meeting with Xi Jinping, talking about climate change. It is speculated that Joe Biden's own party are doubting whether he will make it another four years if he does get elected. Do you think Newsom being in China is just an example of the Democratic Party trying to groom him to replace, to replace him with, for president? Uh, yeah, I've been saying this for many, many months now. I do believe that Gavin Newsom is going to be the Democrat nominee, not in 2028, but in 2024. I think the wheels have been in motion for this for quite some time now. I think the Demo Democratic Party is all in on it. I think that they're very well aware that they cannot run Joe Biden, especially if they're not running Joe Biden against Donald Trump. If they run Joe Biden against Donald Trump, they have a chance because there's so much Trump derangement syndrome and so many anti-Trump sentiments around the country. But if we have a candidate like a Governor Ron DeSantis, I think the Democrat Party knows full well that they can't put up Joe next to a young 44-year-old like Governor Ron DeSantis. So I think they're scrambling, and I think that they're finding a way to put Gavin Newsom, I call it installing Gavin Newsom in his place. There's no reason for Gavin Newsom to go to Israel. There's no reason for Gavin Newsom to go to China. There's no reason for Gavin Newsom to launch a tour of red states here in the United States or put forth constitutional amendments if he wasn't planning to run. For me, the writing is on the wall, and any day now, I think we're going to be getting that announcement. I agree, and his answer on Sean Hannity was, <laughs> was looking pretty, um, how are you going? It did look like he was, you know, shaping up to think that he may run. How do you think Joe Biden is going in this kind of lead-up to the campaign season? Do you think he will last until the election in November next year? No, and I think that the Democrat Party knows full well that they have to keep him in the basement. They cannot let him out on his own to do campaign events. He might be able to withstand a few receptions and a few fundraisers here and there, but that is it. They know if they put him in front of a microphone, they don't know what he will say. And oftentimes when he is allowed to speak freely, it's an utter disaster. It's either a gaffe or he says a lie, or he just says things that are very unsettling for all of us Americans to listen to. So no, I don't think that their plan is going to be to put Joe Biden in front of the American people, really at any opportunity. I think that's why he goes to Delaware on vacation every weekend. So I think that the Democrat Party knows full well what they're doing. They are a well-oiled machine. And for me, I'd like to believe that they just are scrambling. But my better sense tells me that this is all very strategic and it's just going to have to play out. They will throw Joe Biden under the bus. Again, it's just a matter of time. Right now, we've got, of course, an international conflict going on. So I think that time is past for the moment. But I would say probably after the holidays, it's going to become quite obvious they have to do something. Well, switching over to his biggest competitor, how do you think Donald Trump is shaping up for the nominate, Republican nomination for 2024? Do you think he's still the right person to be leading the United States? So Donald Trump was the right person in 2016, and I believe the right person in 2020. I think he'd be the right person right now. However, as somebody who's been a vocal Trump supporter since the day he announced his candidacy in 2015, I can tell you this. I do believe if the Republican Party wants to win the White House in 2024, we have to go a new direction. We need new blood. We need a new message that still very much centers around a lot of the Trump themes of America first, but we need a new messenger to deliver a similar message, but maybe one that's a little bit more refined. 
So that's why I have long said that I support Governor Ron DeSantis. I hope that he is our nominee. I think that he could beat Joe Biden. I think he could beat Gavin Newsom. I think that he represents all the things that the Republican Party stands for. And he takes on the tough battles and he wins them. He's someone that follows through. So I'm a big fan of Donald Trump. I believe that he is very much a leader in our party. But I think that it is time to go a new direction. You got to know when to hold him and know when to fold him. And I think Donald Trump, with all these legal challenges, would be better off to take a step back and do what's best for the country, although I don't see that happening. No, neither do I. Changing topics now, Tommy, we've obviously seen transgender athletes competing in women's sports becoming a contested topic as of late over whether it's fair that biological men are winning in competitive female sports, not just in the US but also around the world. But now we've seen these nine Republican governors this week sign this letter urging the NCAA to basically stop this from happening. What do you make of that? Do you think this could go anywhere? I think if the Democrats are smart, they will advance the cause for women's rights, feminism, and equality for women. Unfortunately, they have left that mantle many, many years ago. Now it seems that the Democrats only support feminism when it means pro-abortion, which is really unfortunate. But there is just no rhyme or reason. I don't care if you're a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent. I don't care if you don't care about politics. There is no rational human being in America, in the UK, in Australia, wherever you want to look, that legitimately in their heart of hearts believes that a man should be able to compete against women, beat women, and somehow that should advance inclusion or equality. It's quite the opposite. Now, if they want to have their own category for people who are gender confused, that's all fine and dandy. However, they shouldn't be allowed to trample on the rights of women and the accomplishments and the achievements of women, their scholarship opportunities, their ability to advance in their sport and in their profession. There's just no reason for it. And I would hope that around Around the world, we can come into some unified agreement on this because it's biology, it's reality, and it's true fairness, and we have to put that kind of fairness first. I would think that liberals and Democrats around the world would believe in that, but unfortunately, they're showing us otherwise, especially here in the United States. Do you think there's going to be a moment where not just the NCAA, but, you know, the Olympics Committee, the whole, any sporting body comes together to kind of make a blanket rule that they are going to ban biological men from competing in women's sports? They have to. There really is no other choice because otherwise women's sports will cease to exist. You're seeing so many that, uh, you know, I believe that there are some that believe they are transgender. That's one category. And then I think you see another group of people who are actually men and they want to be men, but they want to compete against women. So they view women's sports as their retirement plan because they couldn't compete against men. And it's about attention and it's about spotlight and it's greedy and it's wrong. And I don't think women's sports can continue for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years if this is allowed, because there are simply far too many people who will take that opportunity away from women and do it gleefully for the attention. You see Leah Thomas shamelessly doing this and competing against women, dominating against women, when as a man did very poorly in swimming. So if we want a future of women's sports, there has to be a line drawn in the sand and it has to be a global line drawn in the sand. I don't think we're at that point yet, but I hope within the next couple of years we can get there. Tommy Laren, thank you so much for your time. And anyone watching who wants to keep up with Tommy, you can catch Tommy Laren is fearless on OutKick every Monday, Wednesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Tommy, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for the time.